So you guys probably know by now, but Anthony Joshua seems to be shopping around for a new trainer. At long last, he's finally listened to the feedback that many people have been giving him for quite a while now, and it's that he needs to get a new trainer. So he's been seen perusing some gyms stateside in America, and uh, there are kind of three main names that people are speculating Joshua might be choosing based on where they've seen him, which gyms they've seen him go to. And that's Virgil Hunter, Eddie Reynoso, and Ronnie Shields. So I wanna kind of give my take on these three, maybe some pluses and minuses of um, their potential influence if they were to join Anthony Joshua. But then I also want to chuck in some names of people I think maybe have been overlooked and could potentially be better fit for Anthony Joshua in the long run. And so starting with Virgil Hunter, this is someone who has clearly, um, he does a good job of improving his fighters' IQs. He's very deep in the IQ and the strategy, strategy side of boxing, excuse me. And this is always a plus, especially in my eyes. You guys know that I love the cerebral aspect of boxing. And I think it's a very, it's, it's a pivotal part of someone's performance and someone's success in boxing. It's how well can they engage their boxing brain. And it's also something that everyone can improve. Now, not necessarily to the same degree, because some people, they may not be as good at retaining information other people can retain information but their temperament means that a lot of rationale goes out the window as soon as they get into a heated situation which happens in boxing believe it or not and so but increasing your iq is always a plus in my opinion so that's one strength of virgil hunter and uh, certainly a positive if anthony joshua did decide to start working with him but and hatman raised this point is that if you look at a lot of Virgil Hunter fighters, they have a very similar construct. And I think that's already an issue that Anthony Joshua has, is he can be quite, I want to say robotic, but he has added a bit more fluidity to his, to his style. But nevertheless, he still has a construct. And a construct isn't necessarily a bad thing because you get fighters who, they need a construct. They, if not, they're disjointed and they're ineffective in the ring. Some fighters need a construct, but the way I see it is you want to have um, an understanding of the fundamentals, which can be your construct, and then you add your own personal flair and own personal style off of that, which I don't really see that much from Virgil Hunter fighters, such as Andre Ward. Now, Andre Ward's kind of, he was, he played a part in the kind of genesis of this Virgil Hunter style because Virgil Hunter reared Andre Ward from scratch, from a young boy. And I think he saw the success of that, of, oh, I've just taken this guy from scratch. So maybe from now on, I train all my fighters like this. Uh, it doesn't typically work because then if you look at someone like Amir Khan, he had a lot more athleticism, I want to say, than Andre Ward, but that construct kept him disciplined and he had success with it. Of course, Amir Khan has his own weaknesses, but you sometimes felt that Amir Khan could do more. And I kind of get that feeling with Tony Yoka as well, who is also working with Hunter. And I think has, uh, has been with Hunter since his pro debut. But then on the other hand, you have someone like uh, Joshua Boazzi, who I feel has improved quite considerably since being with Virgil Hunter. So I think it really depends on the individual, which would be the case of any trainer. But I just don't think that Joshua needs to be working with that kind of construct because he already has it ingrained in his style already. Anyway, moving on to Eddie Reynoso, who is a trainer who has a lot of momentum right now. The Eddie Reynoso stable of fighters has been doing fairly well recently. Of course, he has Canelo. He has Frank Sanchez, who just got a win over FA Jagba. Um, he's got Oscar Valdez, uh, been in some hot water recently, as has... Um, Ryan Garcia, kind of falling out of favour with a lot of fans. But also Andy Ruiz, who, as everyone knows, has his own saga with Anthony Joshua. And now, Eddie Reynoso is someone who understands the fundamentals of boxing, as well as the fundamentals of coaching, which is effective drilling. 
And so that's always a good sign. But the thing I like most about Eddie Reynoso is he has this understanding of fundamentals and he gets his fighters to drill it over and over and over again. If you see him on the pads or guiding his fighters on the bags, you see he gets them to repeat it, the same technique, the same sequence over and over and over again until it's finely tuned and it's, it's as close to perfect as possible. But then he also likes to encourage his fighters to put their own flair on the fundamentals. And um, similar to the previous point I made, I like to see boxing like many sports, but you, you want to have a grasp, a true understanding of the science, and then you want to add your art form to it. Because a lot of people, they kind of get caught down the middle. It's like, which is better, the science or the art? Why go for one when you can use both? Master the fundamentals in the science and then add your own flair afterwards as you get more experienced and more confident. And I think that's what Eddie Reynoso does quite well. The only considerable downside to Joshua joining Reynoso is I feel like, and this is just my opinion, this is my speculation, but Eddie Reynoso is a Mexican. And I just feel like maybe, just maybe, he'd have a slight bias towards his other Latino slash Mexican fighters. And that kind of brings into question how strong would the relationship be between Joshua and uh, Eddie Reynoso if Eddie Reynoso has this maybe subconscious bias. Or maybe it's even a conscious bias, who knows. But it's certainly a valid point. And I believe that Chris Andre, he brought this point up. And I think it's something that could have an impact on that potential relationship. So that's Virgil Hunter and Eddie Reynoso. Lastly, Ronnie Shields. Ronnie Shields has been around for a long time, a very long time. He's trained many people, um, famously trained Mike Tyson for a stint. I think at the end of Tyson's career, uh, worked with the Charlo twins most notably. I think he still has one of them. Is that Jamal, I think? is still with Ronnie Shields, or maybe I'm completely wrong and he hasn't got one. Um, F.A. Ajagba, a.k.a. Agaba. Shout out to Richard Dwyer for that. And um, so, yeah, and of course, Erislandi Lara. I think those are the probably the four most notable ones, at least of uh, contemporary fighters. Now, excluding Erislandi Lara, because he was already a very accomplished and very capable fighter before he even linked up with Ronnie Shields. But with Ajagba and with the Charlo twins, who I feel Ronnie Shields has probably had the biggest influence over, those guys, they all seem to lack a sharp technique, in my opinion. With the Charlo twins, they're great athletes. And with Ajagba, he's a murderous puncher. But I feel like Technique-wise, they're just lacking ever so slightly. The technique, biomechanically, from a, a, a movement point of view, they it isn't great. And and I, I can't lump this all on Ronnie Shields, but as a trainer, you, you should always be looking to highlight the weaknesses of your um, fighters, no matter how slight they are, because these weaknesses are, are things that are going to be targeted by other fighters. But then also, they are. It's all about improvement, you know. It, it, we have to get out of this mindset of being good. Forget about being good, because it's not good enough. You have to be better, and so you're always on a constant um, trajectory upwards, striving towards improvement. And I just seen a bit of stagnation with the technique of those three, and it just, for my money, seeing that, I don't think it's the most suitable. Uh, the most suitable fit for AJ's style. And so some people may take exception. That's perfectly fine. This is just my opinion. Uh, on the topic of my opinion, of course, I have the three kind of trump cards that I think maybe some people are overlooking. And the first one is Jonathan Banks, who is a very experienced trainer in his own right, especially with heavyweights. He was obviously part of the Vladimir Klitschko camp for many, many years, um, and he is kind of the last generation of proper crunk fighters, and so he, 
I want to say is one of the best sources for that kind of crunk style mentality fighting. You know, he uh, he's from that that empire, that crunk empire. And so I feel like he'd be a good fit for Anthony Joshua. And I felt this for a while um, because he just seems to have an all-round skill set as, as a boxing trainer. And so the... If you look at Jonathan Banks when he hooked up with Gennady Golovkin. Now, Gennady Golovkin is, is, it's no secret that he's quite a mechanical fighter, has a very high IQ and just has great ability all round. But he was never the most fluid. But then I feel like uh, Jonathan Banks was able to add a bit of more of a, a fluidity to his work. And look, you're never going to, completely transform someone but it's the influence that like that little uh, modification a little adjustment can sometimes be the difference and I think most people agree that that's what Joshua needs he needs a bit more fluidity not to necessarily discard everything he has but just to just to loosen up a little bit get things flowing some more rather than being so mechanical and I think Jonathan Banks could potentially be the man to add that aspect to Anthony Joshua's game. And Chris Andre brought this guy up, this gentleman, and I don't necessarily think he should be a trainer, but more of an advisor to Anthony Joshua, and that is Vladimir Klitschko. And I think, to some degree, Vlad, for a while, has kind of... He's, uh, been an advisor to Joshua in some capacity but I think having Jonathan Banks as the trainer and Vladimir Klitschko as someone who is maybe an assist to give his two cents here and there not just on boxing physically but in the mental aspect because Joshua and Vladimir Klitschko seem to have some sim similarities in terms of their personality and their psychology not completely the same but similar and so Vladimir Klitschko, he's been in this situation before where he's had to rebuild himself after some quite crushing defeats. And he did so and he was able to effectively and reign for a very long time. And yes, I'm aware that the state of the heavyweight division when Klitschko was reigning compared to the state of the division now, very different. But nevertheless, Klitschko was someone who had a similar disposition to Anthony Joshua where he, he's not the most aggressive guy not necessarily timid I think Joshua has a bit more tenacity than Klitschko but say Joshua compared to his contemporaries I think a lot of people accuse him of lacking fire and that's probably a valid criticism but with Vlad he you know he's not the most aggressive guy he's not the most confrontational guy relatively speaking but he was able to rebuild himself technically and really try and minimize his weaknesses and almost to the point of cancelling them out while maximizing his strengths and he had a lot of success maybe Joshua can can benefit from something like that John, uh, Joshua strikes me as someone who like Vlad needs a, a stable environment probably doesn't operate too well when things are chaotic and unpredictable so Vlad as an unofficial advisor just on the side in training camp throughout camp giving Joshua little hints here and there. I think I think that pairing, Jonathan Banks and Vlad, would be a, an effective one. And now, one name who I haven't heard anyone mention, which I think personally is better than all options, so maybe I'm slightly biased because it's, it's my opinion, but that is Ismail Salas. I, Ismail Salas is, is a great trainer. He's a very experienced trainer with from the lighter guys right through to the heavyweight guys the big guys he's come from that cuban school of boxing and i'm sure he's worked with loads of uh heavyweights um on that amateur cuban scene and he understands fundamentals he also has that that flair you know that boxing flair that latino boxing flair come from cuba and he just if you look at the fighters that he's trained, like Joe Joyce, once again, Joe Joyce was a fairly accomplished fighter before he even linked up with Salas. But then also look at Ugas. These are guys who, 
they don't look as if they should be fluid, but they have a, a fluid motion to them. And so they both have flaws, don't get me wrong, but you can see that Salas is able to get his fighters moving in a very fluent way. And it must come down to the way he drills the technique and the, the understanding, the way he breaks boxing down to his fighters. And he kind of changes their perception of it. And so Ishmael Salas is someone who I feel is a very good fit for Anthony Joshua. Now, I'm not sure about Salas' situation as of uh, right now, but he's kind of been dipping in and out of retirement for a while. But he, I, I think if he, if you put enough money in front of him, he'd be willing to relocate. He'd be willing to kind of um, get his platform shoes that he likes to wear when he's working with the heavyweights or the taller fighters. Uh, I think he'd be willing to do it for Joshua. So I think, hey, anyone in Team AJ, if you want a suggestion, I'd say give uh, Ishmael Salas a call and add some of that Cuban style, that fluidity, that fluency, and also the effective uh, boxing IQ and strategy that Ishmael Salas has, as well as the experience too. So that is my take on this news that Anthony Joshua is shopping around for a new trainer. This is my two cents. I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. Let me know what you think in the comment section. Do you agree with the points I made? Do you disagree? Who do you think Anthony Joshua should go for as a trainer? Who do you think he should avoid as a trainer? Put it all down below in the comment section. There is a video dropping at five o'clock this evening. Uh, it's going to be a film study. I'm not going to spoil the surprise. You'll see who it's on. So uh, thanks for listening to this video. Like, comment, share, subscribe as always. And I'll catch you in the next one.